Hi everyone, my name is Akshay. Topic that we are going to discuss today may be the most important topic most of you have never heard of. Now this topic is so important that it forms the basis of all the exercise modalities in the world. It is very very simple yet it is extremely deep and extremely important for every coach, every trainer and every sportsman including the basic or the novices or the individuals who join a gym and actually do not understand certain questions, certain answers which they have, which they have in mind with time. Now uh, the topic today we are going to discuss is the principles of exercise physiology. There are total five principles which I am going to discuss in front of you. There are certain more principles which not be required by most of us. So I am discussing the five, the basic ones and the most important ones. The first principle in the principles of exercise physiology is the principle of individuality. Now as the name suggests, we all are born different. We have different body types, different mental makeup, different genetics. It is said that only the identical twins in the world have the same genetic characteristics. So based on this simple principle, we have the answer to your basic question that as to why when two individuals are training with the same program, the same training program, same stimulus, same nutrition tactics, uh, same amount of rest, everything is the same, they still adapt to it differently. This is because both the individuals are different and they will get the different results with the same program or the same uh, nutrition program or exercise program, whatever you want to call it. Now one of the reasons for the principle of exercise physiology is uh, that the genetics or the genes which all of us have are extremely different, extremely varied. So that is why whenever you follow an exercise program or whenever you follow a nutrition program, it does not have to be the same. And that is the reason that the exercise program and the nutrition program has to be individualized based on each person's characteristics. Now that is one of the, uh, one of the reasons that we call certain sportsmen as genetically gifted. They have certain genes which help them in progressing in their particular sport to a much higher level which even a, no which a normal person even with best of practice, best of training cannot do it. The second principle in the principles of exercise physiology is the principle of specificity. Now this simply means that a person adapts to a uh, certain particular training stimulus based on the volume, intensity and the type of training. We'll simply uh, uh, make it more clear. It simply means that a bodybuilder, if he wants to be a good bodybuilder, has to train in that particular stimulus. If a marathon runner trains how a bodybuilder does, he can never be a champion marathon runner. That's why every individual, every sportsman has to train as per his or her needs. In similar way, when a person goes to a gym, this is for the novices or the layman, when a normal person goes to a gym, he or she needs to be very clear in mind that what actually they want and accordingly the training program, the diet program will be designed. Now this training, uh, training pr uh, principle that is the principle of exercise specificity is in conjunction with most of the other principles and all the other principles which I am going to discuss uh, in future are also interconnected. So the first principle which we discussed was the principle of individuality is in connection with the principle of specificity. The third principle in the principles of exercise physiology is the principle of disuse. Now this simply answers the question which most of the people are asking me almost every day. That is, if they stop working out, why do they lose their muscle mass or why do they lose their stamina? This principle says that you use it or lose it. That is, if you want to work out or you want to improve in your particular sport or in your particular field, you really have to work out every day with a particular intensity. And as the day progresses, you will have to keep on progressively improving and overloading your body, which I'll be giving you in the next principle. Fourth principle in the principles of exercise physiology is the principle of progressive overload. Now this principle may be the most important principles you, uh, you should know. Uh, when it comes to progressive overload, it simply means overloading your particular uh, body or your, that particular muscle to get better results. Now one of the questions that all of you are asking your trainers and a lot of other people is that you are following the best training program maybe on from the internet or from a magazine or your trainer has given to you but maybe after a month or two months you, your body starts getting adapted to it and you stop getting results now why does that happen let me tell you a very very famous uh, thought by a top strength and conditioning experts named Charles Poliquin he's actually my mentor uh, this guy said 
that even the best training principles in the world is best only till the time a person adapts to it. Now what it simply means is that a human body is a very very versatile product. Even if you put the body in the maximum of stress in a particular situation, over time it will adapt to that situation. Similarly, even if you follow the best exercise principle or the best exercise uh, uh, program in the world, slowly over time your body will adapt to that program and then you will stop getting results. And that's why you have to progressively overload. That means slowly over the days you have to increase the intensity, maybe by weights or by frequency or by tempo or in some other way so that you keep on increasing the stimulus on your muscles and keep on getting results. The fifth and the last principles in the principles of exercise physiology is the principle of hard and easy. Now in the 1960s, there was a very, very famous trainer named Vince Gironda. Vince Gironda was such a famous trainer that the top Hollywood actor and actresses of that time used to come to him for training. He also trained the top bodybuilders of the 60s and the 70s. Vince Gironda's thoughts were way ahead of, ahead of his time. Now, uh, Vince Gironda said a very, very beautiful thing that the most dangerous part in a particular training is over enthusiasm uh, with which you can see most of the people training in the gyms. That simply means in conjunction with the principle of hard and easy that your training cannot be hard continuously for days, weeks and months together. This will simply burn you out and lead to what is known as overtraining. Now to prevent overtraining, you have to have periods of hard high intensity training followed by periods of active rest and thereafter again increase the intensity again followed by periods of active rest. The principle of hard and easy simply states increase intensity for a particular time, give your body active rest so that it can recuperate and thereafter increase intensity further and then again give it active rest for proper recovery. For more on fitness, log on to onlymyhealth.com.